do you go from last to first? Singapore will tell you, you base your decisions off of research. And what did that research tell them? It told them that if you change the way you teach math and science, your economy can change. Not only did their economy change, but their academic performance changed, changed as well. Let's take a look. What you're seeing here are the results from the data from the 2015 TIMS test. First look at the beginning column, that gray column. It gives us just a few, a sampling of a few different countries. The next column over will give you the mean score, the international score being 500. That means you're right on target. Grade level, you're there. United States scores at 518 and Singapore at 621. A difference of 40 points would constitute one grade level. But what's most impressive about their academic performance are those next two columns, the advanced and the high. These are problems that a computer can't solve. We would refer to these as novel problems. Singapore scores very high in comparison to US, but also to the international average. So the world wants to know, what did they do? Let's look at what they did before and what they're doing now that changed their academic performance and their economy. What did they do before? Look familiar? They believed that memorizing steps and doing procedures again and again and again was what we would refer to as mathematics. They thought to make math hard, just make the numbers bigger. And that was hard math. They've changed that mindset. They now believe that's tedious. What are they doing now? They based their curriculum off of what I'm going to refer to as five guys. The first guy we're going to look at reminds us that mathematics is learned best when we can connect concrete, pictorial, and abstract representations. His name, Jerome Bruner. He's a researcher from the United States out of Harvard. In this picture, you can see the concrete experience with the manipulatives, the pictorial with the bar model, and then the abstract or the symbolic nature with the division sign and the equal. Jerome Bruner reminds us we were born with visual brains, so when we teach math conceptually, we need to link the ideas in that concrete, pictorial, abstract representation. In linking ideas, Richard Skemp, a British researcher, reminds us that sometimes the conventions we use, convention, conventions such as when we do problems like 300 minus 24, and we have kids crossing out numbers, these conventions are sometimes mysterious or encoded and that there has to be a progression so that students can relate ideas. They are not going to understand that abstract or that conventional method right away, so it's our job to link those ideas. Another researcher, Lev Vygotsky, he tells us that collaboration or collaborative environments are the best environments to learn in. That's real world. Talking, arguing, discussing, proving your point. That's when you learn. You don't learn in isolation. So Vygotsky reminds us that our classrooms should have collaborative structures in place. Zoltan Deans is our fourth of the five guys. And Zoltan Deans tells us that the task that we pick, sometimes people refer to this as an anchor task. That task has to be engaging, and when you move from task to task, or from lesson to lesson, there's a slight variable that changes. And you can't jump too fast, 
or else kids aren't going to be able to connect ideas and the teacher is going to have to tell more than allowing the student to explore. Talk about exploring. Piaget is the fifth researcher they base their curriculum off of that says play, play, play. Kids need time to construct knowledge. So Singapore says teach less and learn more. Allow kids to explore and construct their knowledge. So let us talk about what that would look like in our classrooms in reviewing what they did to get the results. So Singapore, that idea of teach less, learn more, you'll see here in, if we look back at those TIMS results. In this table, you'll notice the 10th and the 90th percentiles. The 10th percentile is referring to the bottom group of students in their country. They're still scoring at grade level. They do this in the way that they wrote their curriculum. They wrote their curriculum in a way that the lowest level kid can learn enough to get by while still challenging those high level kids with the choice of anchor task and the structures that they put in place in their classroom. So what is it that you can do in your classroom to get these kind of results? We need to look a little bit more at their curriculum and the idea that we have to ask kids to persevere when problems get hard, to give them more of those novel and those problem solving opportunities because it's not that Singapore students are necessarily smarter, but they'll claim they had more opportunity to explore, to persevere, and were challenged and encouraged to do so. For some reason, we believe that struggle in our country is a result of not being good at math. And if you struggle, I just mu must not understand the concept. We gotta change that mindset. We have to think a little bit more like Joe Bowler reminds us with that growth mindset, that productive struggle, that when we struggle, we're actually, our brains are actually growing. So Singapore took those ideas where, you know, rote, procedural, uh, mathematics was the way they thought mathematics should be taught. Look at Malaysia's scores in referring back to this idea of rote memorization. Singapore will tell you that they believe if they would not have changed the way that they taught math, remember that rote procedures make the numbers bigger, that they would still be scoring the way Malaysia is scoring. Instead, they decided to make those changes. What were those changes? We're going to make sure that we teach math in a concrete, pictorial, abstract representation. We're going to link the ideas when we teach them. We're going to allow kids to talk in collaborative environments and not only talk, but give them time to explore. If we do these things, you're going to notice differences in the way your kids learn mathematics and the way they perceive mathematics. You actually may have kids that enjoy math class and want to come back and study more mathematics. There's your challenge. Now let's take these five guys, get their ideas into your classroom, and implement a more effective curriculum.